If you've been reading the news recently, you may have seen headlines about the high number of people living paycheck to paycheck, having nothing in savings, the mass amount of consumer and student loan debt, the acceleration of the polar ice caps melting, UFOs are real, and we're on the brink of nuclear war. And that's why you need a budget. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a budget using the Every Dollar Budgeting app. I've been using Every Dollar for three years now, and it has completely changed my life. I've paid off all my consumer debt, I've cash flowed a wedding, a dream honeymoon, expensive electronics, and I even welcome home my first baby girl. Most of this wouldn't have been possible without getting my finances in order, and I owe it all to Every Dollar. Every dollar uses the zero-based budgeting philosophy. What this means is when you add up all your income for the month and subtract all your expenses, it should equal zero. Now, this doesn't mean you spend every dollar you earn, but rather tell every dollar what its job is. If you've ever asked yourself, where is all my money going? This is how you find out. You can use the website everydollar.com or the app. Most of the time I use the website for creating the initial budget or tracking large amounts of transactions, but for a quick transaction or checking balances, I'll definitely use the app. If you're using the iPad version of the app, just know if you go to the website, it's a lot easier to follow along. All right, some quick disclaimers before we begin. It'll likely take a couple of months before you get the hang of this, so do not fret if your first, second, or even third budget is a bit messy. Stick with it and it will start to pay dividends. Something that I recommend is actually creating a budget for the previous month. Track down all your sources of income, all your expenses. You'll start to get an idea of whether you have money left over at the end of the month or if you've been spending more than you take in. Seeing all this laid out in black and white can be quite eye-opening and even emotional but it also can serve as a launching pad for making necessary lifestyle changes. All right, let's get started. Sign up. Email has been verified. Little welcome message here. Something else to know about Every Dollar is it's owned by Dave Ramsey. I did follow his plan to get out of debt, but now that I'm out of debt, I'm a little more Dave Ramsey-ish. Okay, so it's asking what's most important to us right now. Save for retirement, save for a new home, save for kids' college. Tell us more about you. I own a home, I own a car, I'm married, I have a kid, and I have a puppy. So it's now showing us the premium features of Every Dollar. I've never used the premium version of Every Dollar. Probably the biggest reason to get the premium version is bank connectivity. With bank connectivity, any transactions that go in or out of your personal checking account will automatically get loaded into every dollar and it makes it a little bit easier to track it. But one of the ways I disagree with Dave Ramsey is I actually use credit cards, but I pay them off every month. So any transactions I make with my credit card wouldn't be automatically loaded. I'd have to log all those manually anyway. I'm going to go ahead and skip that for now. And here it is asking us about one of the premium features. How would we like to track our expenses? We're going to be doing it manually. Okay. It's now asking us to put in our monthly income. Here, you're going to put all your anticipated income for the month. I'm going to be making up numbers, but it will resemble my budget a little bit. For example, I get paid weekly. My wife gets paid bi-weekly, so I can look at a calendar and I know how many paychecks I'm going to get that month. And I track them all individually. So one, two, three, four, and we will add one for my wife. Okay, and next, if you know exactly what you're going to be paid, you can put that in there. If you have a rough idea, make your best guess based on previous months. A lot of times I like to underestimate my income so that if I end up making a little bit more, I can then choose what I want to do with that extra money. Whereas if I end up making a little bit less, then I have to find where am I pulling that money from. I'm going to put $750 for my weekly paychecks and I'm going to do $1,250 for my wife's bi-weekly paychecks. So that gives us $5,500 of monthly income for this month. Now, throughout the month, some unexpected income can happen as well. If someone sends you some money on Venmo, you sell something, if it's your birthday, you can always add more income in the middle of the month and then decide where you want the money to go. But for now, let's continue with $5,500 as our monthly income. So now we're going to enter in our our monthly subscriptions and bills. We can come in here and remove any that don't apply to us. You can also add items. You could rename these. So I do have a mortgage. Let's put fake number for that. I don't have a water bill. It's built into my HOA fee, but I do have an HOA fee. So and we'll call that 
that. Okay, natural gas and electricity. Electricity, I usually know before the month begins, but gas, I don't know until later on in the month. So I normally put a little bit more than whatever the previous month was as a little bit of a buffer. We're gonna go ahead and put 75 for both of these. Internet, 34.99. Streaming services, you could separate these out. A couple of our services, Amazon Prime and Disney Plus, I have annually. So I have to kind of account for those once a year. I do have the Apple One Premiere plan. You have phone bills, health insurance I have through work. Same with life insurance, so we'll remove those. Auto insurance, my wife and I have separately ahead and add those in. I don't have a gym membership. So that's it for our monthly subscriptions and bills. And already we've spent $2,039. Let's go ahead and continue. Now we've got a plan for the rest of our spending. So groceries, that's a big one. We've gotten a lot smarter with how we grocery shop. We do a lot of meal planning and we've significantly cut back on how much eating out we do. Most months I budget $650 for groceries and I'll budget $150 for restaurants. But back when we were paying off debt, that was zero. I give us about $250 per month on gas, clothing. That's a budget item I'll usually put 50 to $100 in, but also a lot of months it doesn't get touched at all. And if I ever go over budget in a certain area, that's the first category I pull from. I get a haircut every month. Fun and entertainment, I think is one we deleted because um, I don't reckon I, I haven't seen this category in a while. I think we've just kind of made our miscellaneous category our fun and entertainment. I'm going to delete that one. Pet care and child care, I actually have separated out into their own separate categories. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. For now, let's put a hundred and twelve hundred. Repairs and maintenance. If you know you have an oil change coming up or an inspection, you can plan for that here. And miscellaneous, I'm gonna do 150. I'm gonna add another item. One of the things I like to account for is gifts. So if you know you have a birthday coming up or a wedding, some sort of event, plan for that ahead of time. All right, so we've built our first budget and we have $706 left over. However, they haven't yet asked us about any of our debts. We still have to add that in. But let's go ahead and take a look at what our actual budget looks like by clicking finish. So this is your actual budget. You have at the top here income. And if we scroll down, down, there's a giving section. If you tithe, if you donate to the Patreon of one of your favorite YouTubers, you could put all that in the giving section. There's a savings section and there's an emergency fund here. We'll talk about funds in just a second. And then we have our bills and subscription category that we already filled out. We have our spending category we filled out. And then down at the bottom here, we have debt. If you have any debts you're paying off, you can add those here. It's asking what's the name of our debt. So we could say this one is maybe car loan. Yeah. So auto. And you can put in your current balance, what your minimum payment is. So this is new actually. When I was paying off debt, it never really factored in what the interest rate was. Just something to be aware of and check every month. Make sure your balance in every dollar matches your actual balance for whatever you're paying off. We'll say we have 5% on this and we'll say the original balance was 15,000. So all made up here, but that could be one of our debts. All right, so I put in a minimum payment, but it has nothing here for planned. So you should be making your minimum payments. And if you're paying off debt, you really should be putting whatever you can squeeze out of your budget towards this debt. Um, if I was making just the minimum here, you'll notice after I enter that in, now I have $356 left to budget with. And let's say I have a credit card that I've maxed out and is driving me crazy. Easy. We could put that at 5,000 minimum payment, probably like 25 bucks. The interest rate is probably like 20% and they'll put nothing for original balance. We're going to call this master card, debt tight, credit card. So again, you want to be paying at least your minimums. All right. So let's decide what to do with our $331 left to budget. Notice how if I add anything in this planned section down here, it affects what's up here. So if I were to say suddenly I have an oil change due, let's put $50 there. That affects what I have left to budget. If I go over, let's say I have, uh, I need some new tires. Now I'm over budget. Um, and so I'd have to find $169 that I can pull from somewhere else. So maybe I'm not getting any clothes this month. Maybe I can cut back a little bit on my gifts. Maybe I can cut back a little bit on my miscellaneous here. Actually a lot, let's, let's see, where else? Restaurants, we can definitely cut back on. 
Now I got $6 left of budget. I'm gonna throw that back into my miscellaneous and boom, it's an every dollar budget. That's what we always wanna be seeing. Anytime you go over in an area or you get more income, you want an every dollar budget. So if for example, I sold something on Facebook Marketplace and I made 50 bucks, now I have $50 left to budget. In this case, I am going to attack this, this credit card. So that's kind of how that plan section works. So earlier I mentioned how I have separate groups for pet care and child care. I also have it for cars and transportation in general. So down here at the very bottom, I can click add group and let's call this transportation. I'll even add a little emoji. I hover over here, I get these dots, I click and drag these up. So whatever's kind of important, I Debt's probably important. I kind of want that up at the top here. Takes a little bit of finagling. Put it yeah, above our savings there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the items that are gonna go here. I'm gonna have gas. I'm gonna add our auto insurance. I'm gonna combine both of them. And I'm gonna add repairs and maintenance. So now I can move that $500 here and delete this line item and gas, we have 250, so I'll put that here, and I'll remove this line item, and then we have our auto insurances here. So 99 plus 88, if I get rid of this 88 here, I now have 88 left to budget. If I get rid of this 99 here, I now have 188 and 87 cents left to budget. So I'm gonna put 188, 87 down in this line item, and then I can come up here and remove both of these. So this is just something you can do if you want to have multiple groups and spread things out a little bit more. Just having everything underneath bills and subscriptions and spending isn't a bad idea either. But it is nice if I know I'm done with a group for a month, I can just collapse it and it cleans up my budget a little bit. Okay, so now let's actually log some transactions. Over here you have a summary, you have transactions, new, track, deleted, and you have any accounts you've connected if you're a premium member. New is where your transactions would load up if you had a bank connected. Also, if you just hit the plus button here, enter in any generic expense. Let's say you spent $55.55 getting gas, and you can choose the exact date, maybe it was yesterday. You can also choose right here if you know exactly where it goes. So I could just come down here and say it goes into gas, but I'm not gonna do that for now. You also have more options, so you could add a check number or a note. All right, so now we can add our expense, and because I didn't assign it a budget item, it's just kind of floating over here unassigned. So this is the experience you would get if you were using premium every dollar. Any of the transactions you did with your personal checking account would automatically load in here, and then you can come down and find where it's supposed to go. So this goes in transportation, it goes in gas. I would click and drag it over. And there you go. Now it's been tracked. My gas line item has been updated to reflect there's $194.45 remaining. And you can also change this to see how much you've spent of your 250, but I spend most of my time with it in that remaining mode. The other way you can track, and the way I normally do it, is you just go straight to the uh, budget item. So I just come in here, click on internet, and then I have my internet section here. I can click the plus button and it's already calling it internet. It's already got it assigned to that budget item. So I can say $34.99, internet tracked, nothing remaining for that budget item anymore. Another thing you can do when logging a transaction is you can split them between budget items. So let's say I went to the grocery store and I spent $123.45, but not all of that was groceries. Maybe part of it was for gifts. So I can come down here where it says add a split, find the other budget item I wanna apply some to. So here's gifts. And now I can say how much of this $123.45 was gifts let's say it's just five bucks and now that remaining 118.45 will come out of groceries so we'll hit track expense now if i click on groceries i see 118 dollars and if i come down to gifts i see five dollars but if i click on this actual transaction i can see the full amount all right same with income if i get income i'll click up here on the specific paycheck i'll hit the plus button and let's say I didn't make 750, I made 749.95. I'll track my income and you'll notice it says planned 750, received 749.95, and it's still in every dollar budget. So what I always do is I change my planned to 
reflect whatever the reality is. So I planned on 750, but I got 749.95. So I'm gonna change this to 749.95. And now you'll see our budget is reflecting reality again. We're five cents over budget based off of everything else we have planned here. So I'm gonna come down here and remove whole five cents from miscellaneous. So we're back to an every dollar budget. Same thing goes if you go over in a category. Let's say I end up buying a $125 gift. I didn't account for that $5 card. I bought this at the gift store. Let's track that expense. I'm doing just fine. It now says I'm, I, I have negative $5 remaining, but it still says it's an every dollar budget and everything's fine. But what I like to do is reflect reality. I've spent $130 of my planned 125. I changed that to $130. Now there's nothing remaining in gifts and I'm $5 over budget. So now I gotta go find where am I pulling that $5 from? And in this case, I'm gonna pull it from miscellaneous here. So I think that's pretty important. That's how I like to use every dollar. I like to plan my month but then I adjust it based off of how it's going. If I go over in any of these areas, I like to change my plan to reflect that. And if I earn more or less than I plan, I like to reflect that as well. So at the end of the month, I always have the exact same two numbers here. I always have $0 in remaining. And if I went to spent, these would always match. All right, so one thing we haven't really talked about yet is funds. They start you off with an emergency fund and they recommend that you have at least $1,000 saved once you're debt free, three to six months of expenses. And so I can come into this emergency fund here and I can adjust my fund details. We can set whatever our starting balance is and we can set our target amounts. So let's say it's $1,000. We hit save and I can go ahead and say, you know what, maybe instead of attacking my debts this month, I'm gonna try to save some money put $100 there, I'm $100 over budget. I'm gonna come back up to my debt here and we'll just make the minimums there. And I'm gonna pull again from miscellaneous. And there we go, now it's an every dollar budget and I'm planning on having $100. And if I come up here to the month and get this drop down, I can jump ahead a month and get started on the next month if I want. I can jump to a previous month. I should have mentioned this sooner, but if you click on the month at the top here, you can jump back to a previous month. So this is where I would go to get started. But also eventually, once you get towards the end of the current month, you wanna jump ahead to next month and start planning for it. And if I hit start planning, um, it basically copies everything from the previous month. So I can come in here if I know it's a five paycheck month or if I have to take away a paycheck, maybe I'm not selling anything on Facebook Marketplace this month, I can get rid of that. So I'm already $50 over budget here. You'll notice if I plan on putting another $100 into my fund here, I'll have $200 remaining at the end of the month. So you can have multiple funds. If you're saving up for a trip that you know you have coming up, you can have sinking funds. One of the funds I like to use is a Christmas fund. So I'm gonna go here and click add item. I'm gonna say Christmas fund. And you'll notice by default, it's not a fund, but if I click on this and I come over to fund here, I can click set and make this a fund. And if I have anything saved up already, I can put that here. If I have a target amount, let's say $1,200. It's June now, so I've got six months. 1,200 divided by six would mean I have to put away $200 each month. But you can also see how this is a pretty tight budget that I'm working with here. I'm now $200 over budget again. I'm gonna pull from our restaurants. I forgot I've had that there. Um, I could probably scrape by on $550 for my groceries this month. I'm gonna have to. And again, we can reflect all these things as they happen. So if it turns out I haven't spent anything on pet care, I can always eliminate that. Now I have $100 left to budget and then I can put that towards whatever I'm attacking. What's also nice is let's say I purchased a really early Christmas gift. I can log that underneath my Christmas fund. I can click on it, hit the plus button. Let's say I spent $50 on a Christmas gift. I can track that expense underneath my Christmas fund. And so now I have $150 remaining. So I've saved $200 of my income towards this Christmas fund and I've spent $50 of it already for Christmas purposes. And then when I get to July here, you'll notice I'm saving $200 this month and I'll have $350 remaining. And that's because it is factoring in that $50 I spent last month. 
All right, so there's a lot here. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. I do recommend at least once a week, you should be coming in here, logging all your transactions from the previous week, making any adjustments as you need to. A lot of times I'm in here every single day. Staying up on it is always a good idea. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.